My name is Lisa Larson and I am currently the Vice Chair here at Dignity Village. We are the only city-sanctioned, self-supporting, self-governing homeless community in North America that we know of. And we're basically the homeless helping the homeless. We don't have outside governance coming in or overseers coming in and telling us what to do. Um, and so it's it helps build self-esteem and self-respect and dignity again um, by us managing our own selves. I don't think we have felt the actual pandemic uh, results of the homeless situation and probably won't until the next few months. Um, but there is going to definitely be more homeless people out there because they didn't pay their rent for a year and they haven't been able to get the resources to help cover that past rent. So we're still not seeing the tail end of that. I think what we've seen at this point is with the police and the city not doing sweeps and not moving encampments they're just building and building and building so i think that is more visible but i don't think it's really made the homeless situation any worse it's just made it more visible to us but i believe they calculated that it was about december that people that hadn't paid their rent are going to really start getting their eviction notices. So I think we haven't seen the tail end of what the pandemic has done to us. So what, just to get your name, sir. Uh, uh, my name is David Peters. David Peters, and you're from Portland area? Uh, I lived here for 20 years until about two years ago, and we moved to, we sold our house and moved to Salem. Okay, so what do you think about coming back to Portland? It's, uh, it's pretty sad. Yeah. It, it, it's sad, I mean, it's, it's, it's I mean, I don't have any other words. It's just really sad to see a city die. Yeah. And do you think there's any hope to bring it back? No. You don't see no. any hope at all? There, I, I, I don't see people progressing back to the politicians that are mature enough to actually fix this issue. Okay. So I, I honestly, I think as a group, uh, once you once you go down this path, there's just there's not a lot of return from it. I mean, we've we've seen it throughout history and even in the 20th century. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm not very confident that uh, the people of Oregon or, or the people of Multnomah County, Portland, are gonna be able to fix this. Yeah, so it's gonna take a lot of will to do it if there's any mm -hmm. will left out there. Um, what do you think about the homeless problem that we have out here? Um, you know, from my perspective, having just watched this gentleman rage through the park and everything, it doesn't look like he's having a homeless problem. It looks like he's having a drug problem. And I'd be willing to bet if we did a survey of the people that are homeless or without housing or whatever we call it nowadays because we like to you know what Mark Twain used to say keep your words warm and soft because you're ultimately gonna have to eat them so that's what we're doing now we have to make the words a little softer so we don't use homeless I'm not sure what the current word is um, so yeah I don't think we have a homeless problem I think we have a drug problem well I moved from Seattle six months ago so you know the homeless problem is just about as bad in Seattle as it is in Portland so to me I'm just used to it but it does, you know, this, this year we actually, me and my boyfriend bought a house together and that was definitely a factor in deciding where to live is we did not want to live in a neighborhood with lots of homeless people, you know, just because we'd be worried about stuff getting stolen or break-ins. I think it's really dehumanizing to call it a homeless problem, actually. Um, I think obviously the reason no one chooses uh, to live in the cold on the street um, and the fact that people view it as something to get rid of. Uh, I mean, it's just immoral <laughs> to me, honestly. Um, everyone's a person and so the concept should be to help people and not judge them. Yeah, so you would like to start with your name. Uh, my name is Nella. Nella, and how long have you been here in Portland? Um, Couple months. Couple months. Okay. And where'd you where'd you come from? Uh, the coast. The like coast. Seaside Astoria. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. Nice area. So presently, you are living in Portland um, without shelter. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any like a tent or anything like that? I have this sleeping bag. Sleeping bag. So you basically sleep on the street. Yeah. Do you think? See, a lot of people say I'm down here, but the only only way from only place to go from here is up. How do you see that in your future? Um, there's, you can go way further down from here. 
Okay. Um, I could definitely be passed out with a needle in my arm on a different corner in a worse part of town. Uh, there's a lot of that going on still. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm hoping the only way for me is up, but I know that there's two directions, so I gotta work towards going up. Yeah. Um, which I'm trying. Uh, I've got like a weird disability, so I'm trying to get on social security at the moment, but it's not like visible, so uh, they don't want to really do anything about it. So I'm just kind of working on that slowly, but even that probably won't give me enough for rent around here. What do you think has brought homelessness to Portland, Oregon? Well, if you have 50 homeless people, you're going to have 50 different reasons and also probably 50 different solutions of helping those individuals. Um, a big part of the reason why we have so much of the houseless community is our rent prices are way too high here in Portland. Um, of course, the pandemic has not helped the situation. It's only going to get worse in these upcoming months. Um, but the houseless situation is not just in Portland. It is worldwide. Right, so this is some of the problem in Portland is nowhere to stay so they get these broke down motor homes and just park them on the side of the road and you can see the messes that a lot of them have made and left after they moved out of the area they just leave the piles of junk there absolutely no responsibility and I've come through here and seen these places on fire it's really sad and it doesn't have to be like that there are, there are a lot of solutions to the houseless. Um, when you become houseless, and if you've been out on the streets for any length of time, you do lose a lot of that hope. Um, you also don't want to be told what to do by a government source. So a lot of that could be the individuals. I know when we were out on the streets, which my husband and I spent about two years out on the streets, there was no way we were going to move into a shelter. You hear about violence in the shelters, you hear about theft happening in the shelter, plus all the diseases that could happen in the different shelters. There was no way we were going to move into a shelter and follow their rules and guidelines. We were lucky that we found Dignity Village. That and the fact that we didn't want to be, you know, woman in that door, man over in that door. I mean, we're a couple, we wanted to be together. And so with Dignity Village, we found that. There are, I just heard a statistic the other day that there are more empty houses here in the US than there are homeless. Well, I think the government and some of the rich individuals need to figure out a way of uh, changing those where they are available to people. Um, you know, I don't know what the politicians can do. Um, I think in general it has to be like a whole change through like everybody. Um, I don't think there's going to be like a law that's just going to pass and make it easy for people to get housing. Um, I know for a lot of people, drugs are a problem. Um, alcohol is the number one reason I became homeless. But uh, it's like I left the house. Um, because I was drinking, got kicked out, and just kind of ended up here. But I know that's the case for a lot of people, mm -hmm. but for some people that's not the case. They just can't get anywhere. Um, can't get a job, job's not paying enough, jobs don't even pay enough really for like rent in a place around here anyway. Right. Um, and it's just, yeah, so, kind of a mix of everything. I, you know, I don't want to say anything to the politicians. I want to say something to the people. Use your head. Look and see where are things going? What direction are we going? And choose a different path. Well, you know, the politicians, let's fire them all. Fire, I mean, every one of them. What, if they're so smart with their degrees and with the fact that, you know, what is Mr. Wheeler, a multimillionaire? You know, I mean, if he's that smart, why did this happen? 
Um, I just think, I mean, I think it's a societal, a structural issue. Um, there are plenty and plenty of open apartments, um, there, and there are plenty of people who can't afford them because we're gentrifying. Um, there's just no, I mean, I'm a graduate student. I spend two thirds of my income on my rent and I'm lucky that I get paid to, to work, you know? Um, I think we need to frame it as something that needs to be solved rather than an issue that we need to get rid of. Um, providing mental health support, providing free places for people to live and establish a base. Um, you know, you can't apply for a job without an address. There's that adage. Um, we just need to be able to provide more resources. I don't know, a lot of people don't know about some of the resources. Um, and a lot of those resources are overburdened by as many cases as they have. We just heard that um, Join, for instance, and their inReach team is not accepting any more new clients right now. Um, and that's because of some internal problems. But there is, there's so many homeless, and I don't know if there's enough resources or not, but a lot of people don't want to use those resources. They want to get back on their own feet on their own. And that's really hard. Uh, to come up with your first and last month's deposit, to, uh, well, if your credit is shot, how do you rebuild that credit to get into a place? So there's a whole lot of what ifs and maybe solutions that nobody knows about yet. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a matter of everybody getting together. There's, because I mean, all they could really do is tell people that it's okay for people to sleep in your doorways, which is kind of not, I mean, it's up to them. Um, private property so they get to decide so I don't think a, like a law is gonna be good for that but yeah I'm, there's really no solution that I can see so yeah I, I, I would be able to say and I bet money on it that the pandemic when the people do the actual studies years from now or even quarters from now that we're gonna find out that the pandemic didn't have anything to do with this violence didn't have anything to do with this it's all of our cultural issues that are coming home to roost. And the fact that we don't have the political will to say no to people. Do you feel the pandemic has affected the the, pop, the homeless population here? Do you think that these issues have existed um, long before the pandemic? I don't think that I would be a homeless if not for the pandemic. I started drinking a lot more. Um, as I was already kind of working towards not drinking, uh, like getting sober wasn't very easy during the pandemic. And I think that's the case with a lot of other people, um, as well as the people that don't do drugs. Um, keeping their, their house wasn't easy during the pandemic, so nothing was really um, stable for anybody, I don't think. And the people that are lucky enough to have enough can kind of keep afloat, but the people that weren't lucky enough to have so much, we ended up at the bottom. And if you had a message for city council um, you know, because I know that they have also um, had this issue brought to their attention, I assume, many times. Is there anything you would like to tell them? Well, I do believe that their ideas of making more villages, which they are in the process, I think, of putting six in, six new villages. Um, I would like to see them more village ran and not have case managers and case workers. Of course, have them there to help out, but don't have them running the camps because being that we are self-governed it really has taught most of us how to live together and how to work together instead of running to the case manager to solve all the problems um, and if they're going to be case manager or city ran don't call them villages call them shelters that are in a tent situation I am, as well as most of our villagers here, we're very proud of our village model. And if they start turning or building these villages and just having them run like a shelter, it's not going to be the same. So would you agree that it's gonna take the will of the people yes. to come together and fix this problem? Definitely. Get everyone off the street. Make everyone's life more productive. It's gonna take everybody getting involved. Everybody involved, and that's the way I feel myself. Homeless people and people with homes. Right. Yes. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, 
the way you feel about it. Just some people don't really understand that homeless people are just regular people too that happen to be sleeping on a corner or underneath a bush or you know wherever and they do not treat them with any respect like a human being at all and I just kind of think that's wrong. Um, I've always thought that was wrong before I was homeless but being homeless you really really get to see it. I think the solution, like I said to begin with, if there's 50 houseless people, there's also going to be 50 different solutions. And I think the village model is a really good step in the right direction. Um, the old phrase of, you know, you give somebody a fish and they eat for the day. You teach somebody how to fish and they can feed themselves. A lot of people out there have forgotten how or never really knew how to work within the system or to get finally into where they want to be and continue to keep it. Um, so I know one of my last phrases that I use on tours is keep in mind homeless might be the homeless out there right now may have been your neighbor last week in a house or it might even be you next week because being homeless has became such a, I hate the word problem, but it's became such a problem that most people are one paycheck away from maybe becoming homeless. So if we all go back to grassroots and start to help each other, it would probably solve a big part of the issue.